Hello folks, it's George Leoniak and welcome to New Geometry. I'm thrilled to be bringing you another video. And today we're gonna to get into the Reush God Seed, uh, another video on this. And uh, today it's gonna to be about 12 amazing things that the Reush God Seed um, contains within it, quite simply, some pretty revolutionary techniques uh, of working with sacred geometry. And uh, we're gonna get into the forms it contains, the spirals, the pyramids, the squaring the circles. So I have a presentation set up around that. And I think that this uh, pattern contains a lot more than is discussed through its uh, original origin being related to Kelantic science and the crystal spiral. Um, this has so much relationship to the phi ratio and other patterns of creation that are related to and connected to uh, working with the golden proportion. So um, we're going to go back just to a couple videos ago just to describe uh, one of the amazing things was uh, the formula for the phi ratio being uh, laid out in this circle pattern. So this Reush God seed really consists of one, two, three, four circles with the eight around it. And the pattern itself contains a uh, root five, which is this circle here. And the distance between the circle that's created by those two squares to the outer circle, uh, if we're dealing with a one inch circle in the middle, would be a half an inch on either side plus root five. If you divide that in half, it creates 1.618. So that's the formula for five root five plus one divided by two. The template itself contains the phi proportion within it. So that was one of the first amazing things. Of course, this is just a little bit of an elaboration on that first image, um, but it contains a nice diagram. The second thing here, uh, containing the sacred root diagram. It's just a real classic in sacred geometry, two squares stacked on top of one another with a kind of one inch uh, radius circle or one inch diameter circle in the middle. And then we have uh, easily square root of two, the diagonal once again being the square root of five. I don't have the square root of three put in here, but if we were to just create the vesica shape, we would get the square root of three, vesica Pisces shape. And of course, we uh, also divide the line into phi proportion on either side, as well as phi proportion from the top of the square to the outer circle. So just a lot of phi ratio, just from the simple diagram as it exists um, without very much modification to it at all. So the amazing thing number three was that if we don't go off the root five circle, which has this little gap between these uh, circles, uh, the, the four central circles, there's this little gap. Um, if we just go around the two inch, um, the, the one inch uh, radius circle, two inch diameter circle, that will be in phi proportion to the outer concentric circle, the outer circle, and then the inner circle here that's touching those circles, uh, the ring of eight around it. I guess I'm calling it the ring of fire, as you'll see in a moment over here, PHI fire. Um, this contains the three nested golden ratio circles. So that was a quite amazing thing. It's gonna lead to another discovery in a moment. But this uh, ring of fire, P-H-I-R-E, fire, uh, basically from the outer circle here to the center of our drawing, if we just draw you know, lines through the center to the outer um, uh, where the circle uh, you know, is tangent to the outer circle, the smaller circles are tangent to the outer circle, if we can tend to contain that line, extend that line all the way through, we've got one inch here, 0.618. So all the red little segments in the middle are 0.618 and the one inch remainder are all the blue. So we've got eight phi ratio uh, segments going towards the center of the drawing. So that's another very cool, amazing discovery within this pattern. Now back to the nesting of the three golden ratio circles. And I pretty much have a whole video on this. The previous one before the flower of life video, the end of the line, that one was called. 
Um, but this was about the golden rectangle and the spiral originating from the center of the diagram. Well, these three nested phi ratio circles, including this one little corner point over here of this square, right? So those four points would make a square. If we go from the center vertical line of our diagram to the horizontal intersection here down to this point, and we go back into a corner, well, that's a nice golden rectangle. And I don't have the other lines, but basically the 45 degree angles and the cardinal directions here would give you everything you need to continually create the golden rectangles and squares within those to continue to go on infinitely into the center here. Now, there is also a very simple way to construct the phi ratio pyramid, Kepler's triangle. I have a close up this, of this exactly where the segment line is, so you can create this yourself quite easily just from drawing this. Um, but after hunting around for, you know, kind of different types of diagrams, looking for the phi ratio pyramid, which has a 51 point uh, 8273 angle in here. Well, this is a nice example of that golden ratio phi pyramid. And it will also contain the net for the pyramid, meaning if this square was the base of the pyramid uh, right here, these, if you just fold these up and in, these four outer triangular shapes, and bring them into the center, that will fold up to the pyramid itself, which is the same view of the, uh, to, to, this would turn into the side view of that same size pyramid. So it's amazing that it contains a net as well because it's doing that. It's also squaring the circle. A golden circle here is touching the top of the pyramid and that's intersecting that square. So we've got a lot of things going on in this diagram, but easy construction of the phi ratio pyramid contains the net of the pyramid and also squares the circle all in one. Now my apprentices and I, we did a cool drawing of this recently and we turned this into a um, folding up. So here's the diagram, here's the Reusch God seed with some extra circles you need to get to the final um, drawing. But you see, we can easily construct these lines. There's a central square. I cut this one out myself, colored it in and created the uh, the, the golden ratio pyramid, phi ratio pyramid, um, which contains the square root of uh, phi within it. So we can just fold that up and create the pyramid from that simple template, just like that. Very, very cool to be able to do it in such a simple way. Now, here's a little bit more of a controversial, uh, amazing thing about this. And I'll try to walk you through this. It's a couple of weeks ago since I did this GeoGebra construction and wrote all these crazy notes on it at the time. Um, but this was uh, a test for basically the true value of pi. Now, um, the value here is 3.14159, continuing on. And that is what you would use on your calculator. And this other value of pi, 3.144605, and continuing on. Now, if you divide that by four, uh, excuse me, uh, square, the, the uh, uh, square root of five divided by four is, uh, excuse me, four divided by the square root of five will give you this value. And if we multiply that by two, it's 6.28921. So what I'm trying to show here in this is that in our circle construction here that I did, um, I've set up the numbers in a way to test this out and see what the circumference of this outer circle may be in relationship to the edge of this edges of this square. So the way I went about this was to be, um, you know, test the circumference, create the pyramid, because that's supposed to square the circle and hopefully with 100% accuracy so that the perimeter and the circumference of the circle, so the perimeter of the square, so the circumference of the circle will be equal, meaning they should both be 6.2892110. They should be the same between the two. 
Now, when I uh, use the true value of pi, what I'm calling the true value of pi, because this is you know, part of what the results show here, is when I multiply that by two, I get 6.28921. And then when I divide that by four, that gave me, so I did all that work first. When I divide it by four, that gave me the precise edge length of the square, okay? So this value based on the true, all the blue here, divided by four gives me the 1.5723027, and that was more digits over here. Um, that will provide, give me the correct edge length. Now, with what GeoGebra gives me based on the standard value of pi, um, that value is 6.283185. And when you divide that by four, it gives you 1.57076. So uh, when you multiply that by four, it's uh, of course not gonna equal the same as the circumference. So uh, anyway, that was just a little test, probably lost you in there at some point, but uh, for what it's worth, that was uh, a way to kind of look into what the value of pi might be in relationship to phi ratio, the square root of five, 1.2720. So anyway, let's go on. So another amazing thing here uh, in the discovery process was not only do we have some kind of some of these cool, you know, geometric discoveries related to the pyramid and the golden rectangle. We have a larger golden rectangle. And really whenever you have a golden rectangle that's flat like this, well, that golden rectangle is inside the icosahedron. So um, I've got an icosahedron around here somewhere to use as a prop. Uh, here we go. This icosahedron now is going to be facing you like this in your in the drawing, which means that it's on its edge view here. And I've drawn this in the past, um, looking like this, I call it the square view orientation. It's the same drawing pretty much. All we've done is just uh, put it more, I guess, in a vertical axial view so that the north and south of the icosahedron will be on the vertices. So they'll be spinning around like this and compared to a drawing, which typically came out like this in square view. So we can draw them both in this diagram. And I've shown it this way because of how the golden rectangle is easily oriented in the diagram. So once we have that big icosahedron, we can easily start to nest all the platonic solids um, within it. So uh, the rest of the dodecahedron lines are going to be actually covered by the edges of the icosahedron, but you could see that these are some tilted pentagon faces, and we see one, two, three, four of them. We have four directly on the back and one above, two, two on the sides here and two on the sides here. So that would be our 12 pentagon faces. And that is a kind of natural nesting of the dodecahedron down with inside the, um, basically it's, you know, we've removed the stellations of the icosahedron, but with inside this icosahedron, down in it, if we took away these stellated points, would be the dodecahedron down inside. There's a pentagon face down inside this uh, icosahedron. All right, so um, we have one nesting of the dodecahedron, which is contained in this diagram. And then, of course, once we have the dodecahedron, we can draw the cube within here. So we have a cube, and this is one cube of five that would be in this. There's another view of the cube in here, but this is the most, uh, there's only one view of the cube that is looking like a square like this. So we'll use that one. And then we also have, uh, because we have the cube, we do have our two tetrahedrons forming a star linked together, um, just crisscrossing two lines across the face of the cube implies that there is two tetrahedron in there, just like this here. Now we could remove the, uh, if we remove the square on there, uh, the, the cube around it, we would also reveal the octahedron that these stellated points are off of, the eight 
equal eight uh, tetrahedra or off of the faces of those octahedra. And this is the octahedron in the middle here that is in purple. So um, there is the nesting of all the platonic solids in this version of the nesting. Yet we can also get to amazing thing number 11 is that we can create a compound of the icosahedron and dodecahedron and pick up the points and the lines necessary to show the two as if they're in a compound form related to the rhombic tricontahedron that's on the right. And of course, this is in that kind of axial view. We have a big rhombic face that is created between a phi proportion of the length of the icosahedron across the rhombus to the width of that dodecahedron across the rhombus. And that's showing up on all these faces that I'm showing you on the form here. So there are 30 faces on here because there are 30 edges for both the icosa and the dodeca, each having 30 faces. So they each crisscross and create 30 new rhombic faces, basically by just connecting the vertices of the two forms in this way. So this is really kind of the ultimate culmination of all the forms in the platonic solids in this nested kind of arrangement. So this is the um, what it looks like without the rest of the lines, but we can easily kind of recreate this in this view of the Reish God Seed. Now, of course, we don't need to use the Reish God Seed in these circles in this way. It really just takes three golden circles and you can hunt around and find the other lines but it does provide some uh, anchor points to start to draw this. But we're gonna put everything all together into kind of a all-in-one type of diagram here where we can combine the squaring of the circle. So here is the square. Remember, this is a golden ratio circle that's gonna be in relationship to this squared circle. And we also can add the pyramid in here and the intersection point that we're looking for is right here. I didn't show you that well before I said I would. Um, let me just hop, hop back to this. So if you're looking to do this golden ratio pyramid in the, um, the uh, Reish God Seed circle template here, you're gonna anchor off of this point here and you're gonna send your ruler down at this intersection point right where these uh, phi ratio circle in the middle here intersects this point of this circle right here. And that will send you a line down to your horizontal line. And then you've created the outline edge of one side of Kepler's triangle. So it's just amazing how easily that showed up. Back to our completion diagram here. Um, we also have that pyramid, which I'm showing. We've got the golden rectangle that's down in the middle um, with the spiral emanating from the center. And I've chosen to show the spiral as if it's arcing around the outer phi ratio. We can also do the spiral as if it's in the squares getting larger. But I wanted to show this one that ends up back at the pinnacle to kind of tie the whole um, spirit matter circle together, connect to the golden spiral inside the tricontahedron. I mean, you're bringing together so many elements of sacred geometry. And I think this is one of the most incredible things about this diagram is that of just how much is contained within it, or at least was revealed to me through working with it and seeing what uh, the relationships of sacred geometry because um, when you first enter into sacred geometry, at least start drawing it or looking through various different books, you'll see there's very many different components. You know, you have platonic solids, which have been said to be contained in all Metatron's cube. And then you have people talking about the golden spiral and rectangle. And then you have this thing squaring the circle. We've got the phi pyramid. And, you know, how does this all kind of relate and connect together? Well, this was one diagram that kind of brought it all together. Um, in very kind of non-traditional type of way of viewing it, considering that the platonic solids are shown more in this square view orientation. Of course, we can all draw this and, uh, you know, that's the cool part about it is that even though I'm showing a lot of digital images, these are all transferable back to your pen and paper so we're able to use the compass and straight edge to recreate these 
uh, amazing sacred geometric patterns that not only um, are beautiful to look at, but also contain all these uh, sacred principles that uh, are eternal in sacred geometry. Um, but I said that's not all because uh, we have an amazing thing number 12, um, Belinsky's dodecahedron, right? So probably many of you don't know about Belinsky's dodecahedron, or maybe you do. Um, but Belinsky's dodecahedron is a three-dimensional form, and it isn't a 12th amazing thing because uh, it seems to be the heart of uh, this very similar tree of life, looks very similar to this Cathara tree of life on the side. Of course, this is all based on the golden rhombus connections, but with inside that golden rhombus isn't actually a true form that I'm holding here in my hands. It's Belinsky's dodecahedron, um, probably discovered nearly about 100 years ago, or he rediscovered it. And it's made with the golden rhombus faces, and it's got golden rhombuses on the side. So it's a dodecahedron because it has 12 of these golden rhombus faces, and it's making a rhombic dodecahedron. There would actually be another one crisscrossing it. Um, but the form itself, the three-dimensional form, is contained right within this pattern of this double star pattern here, which is a very intriguing star because it's related to the icosahedron and the tricontahedron that I was just showing before. Um, but within that star, it contains this um, dodecahedron, which is interesting because the Cathara tree of life um, in my previous videos from about a year ago or more, talk about that geometry being related to the regular rhombic dodecahedron, which is based on, um, let, me, let me get a comparison. Here's the rhombic dodecahedron, which is a compound of the cube and octahedron. And this one being the Belinsky dodecahedron having the golden rhombic faces. And this one being um, uh, just uh, based on the square oct octahedron compound. So uh, it's neat that they both end up with a rhombic uh, face. These are not actually the rhombic faces of that dodecahedron. These, of course, are squished. But when you look at the overall geometry, um, they tend to be similar. Now, the nice thing about this golden tree design here, at least in the God Seed, is it's a much better fit. Um, I based this drawing on the Cathara layout of a Merkaba drawn with the equilateral triangles that are used that intersect these edges of the Cathara tree of life. And when you do your crisscrossing, basically the two equilateral triangles are off center one another anyway. They don't actually meet in the middle. So we have three dots in a row there that you can see center above and below because the triangles aren't centered. Um, so the when you actually draw a circle around that, the outer vertices, uh, only four of them match and these are kind of sunken down. So. I'm not quite sure what the actual structural geometry of the star around this is. This itself can be turned like a, into a rhombic dodecahedron, as I said. Um, but this this one seemed to very much fit very easily into the Reyush God Seed um, overview, at least from a golden interpretation of that design. So uh, there's just really infinite amazing things. And because I spent nearly over a month working with this pattern, I have a whole heap of drawings that I've been doing. Um, but this golden, uh, this golden rhombus will kind of create a spirals of light. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. It's very similar to a drawing that Drunvelo Melchizedek has in his book, The Secret, Ancient Secret of the Flower of Life. It shows root three rhombuses, um, continually creating this kind of nested rhombus inside rhombus inside rhombus. This pretty much just kind of goes on its own in terms of how the phi ratio works on the scaling of golden ratio size squares, infinitely down to the center. And I basically, before doing this, I took a drawing from a previous presentation that I did and just overlaid it so you can see that these Reyush God Seeds would continue to also 
um, gets smaller and smaller and smaller in there. But what I'm pointing out here is that the golden uh, golden uh, spiral is going to follow the golden rhombus points, uh, the, um, the, the the, the top of the pyramid basically here. So from here down to here, that's connected to this rhombus. As I go down further, that's connected to this rhombus. As you go down further, there's the other rhombus that's in there going around another rhombus, another rhombus, another rhombus. So um, he has a comparison, Dronval that is in his book of something being off with the golden spiral in there. There's some sort of space in the dynamic. I think it really just comes down to not a sophisticated drawing because everything was trying to be put into kind of the hexagonal flower of life type matrix all based on the square root of three. Just so everyone, you know, there's also an error in his book early on that he does correct later in the book, but he was saying originally that all the phi ratio vesicas, all the vesicas of the flower of life were in golden proportion, meaning left uh, up, down, left, right would be golden rhombuses. I don't know why I didn't correct that early on in the book, because that's within the first few pages. Um, and then in the second volume, buried way down in the back, it says that he misquoted or misrepresented that information early on. So I don't, I'm not really sure, but this really works out very beautifully for those spirals of light continuing on. It's very, really just a very simple diagram and pattern in general, because this may look like a very complex drawing, but really all it is is just eight golden rectangles that I've drawn here. They're the same ones that are just interacting with those three levels of phi ratio circles. Let me just show you way back at the beginning. Um, basically what I've done here is just taken this golden rectangle. I'm not even doing the rest of the squares or rectangles inside. And when you just overlap those, you automatically start to, just by the interaction of these golden rectangles, the eight of them, it's almost like a hypercube type of thing going on here with golden, probably golden rectangle bricks within this. Um, but just by crossing the lines, we're going to start to create this spiral of light from these four directions. Uh, and we've created three levels of golden rhombuses from the east, west, north, south um, axis. And of course, I can lay over those spirals, which will also follow those relationship. And I've done it in the four directions here rather than just up and down. Um, they're going to crisscross in that type of way and just follow the relationship of those rhombuses all the way to the center. So it really is a big deal to be able to put the golden spiral at the heart of this. And it really took that adjustment of not always drawing a rectangle as if it has a flat base to your page. Uh, or It's really about this 31.7 degree tilt that runs through the vertical axis of the golden rectangle and it will put the spiral at the center and it's super easy to create all the other rectangles. Be quite a complex drawing to actually do, but it does put the spiral at the heart of this and puts it into a kind of better comparison to the crystal spiral, which was, you know, taking ownership and claim over the center of uh, origin of a spiral being the crystal spiral and that the golden spiral is always off to the side somewhere. Well, that's really not the case when we are able to adjust the outline of the rectangle to be in flow with the pattern that's related to the actual forms, such as Belinsky's dodecahedron and the icosahedron at that axial type of um, uh, orientation. Now, of course, we can take this to like a whole nother level of, you know, stars and circles that infinitely go down into the center along with golden ratio squares. There's not anything that is really uh, too difficult to draw here because once you start doing the lines, everything is just going to want to work out. And I did this one on the iPad at the maximum zoom. And if I were to bring you on there, we can continue to go infinitely down into the center of this geometry here 
and you'll feel like you're going through an infinite tunnel into this, uh, in, you know, end point, which eventually just comes because you can't go any further. And that would be this diagram with the uh, spirals laid over it too. So even though they look like a variety of different uh, drawings, it's really the same spiral. The same spirals are going to fit into the dynamic over that, uh, fit in over top of each of those uh, guiding uh, points, uh, vertices in each of those drawings. Okay, so that is the uh, the overview of the drawing of the 12 amazing things and the drawing of the Reush God Seed that really contains an incredible amount of uh, sacred geometry uh, information and knowledge and wisdom within it. And I think it really all does, you know, come back to just how much the phi ratio is contained within this. And once that that was discovered, um, it really opened up the doorway to lead to the 12 things that I shared with you. But I want to say that the Reish God Seed, um, I didn't really have to use that template to discover a lot of the things in there at all because this diagram I did well before I knew anything about the Reish God Seed. It is the same golden rectangles that I did with a circle pattern based on the golden seed of life pattern in the square view orientation, not the hexagon view. It pretty much produced this whole pattern and I was already, you know, creating the template for the pyramid to fold up and do all the things that I just showed you, including the nesting of the platonic solids in the rhombic triconohedron down here. It was like the pattern was already in sacred geometry Although I did find working with the Reush God Seed a very um, easy way to apply all the trails that I followed in sacred geometry and kind of bring them together with a focus around one design and uh, see how it all interrelated and connected. Um, this little template here is in a very short video of mine. I think what this called the What Does the Great Pyramid Contain? Um, check it out. It just shows, you know, basically the little drawings that I have in here and how this folds up. So I'm doing pretty much the same thing that I did in that short two minute video. And I think that it is very cool to have the overview of the template that is also easy to draw in that pattern that uh, anyone can do, even a kid, and start to learn about golden uh, Kepler's triangle and the golden ratio pyramid. And of course, when you get further into it, you know, you come up with the tricontahedron and Belinsky's dodecahedron, which has a very tree of the life, tree of life type of feel. I did not um, do the Kabbalah tree of life in comparison. I do have some images, but I did do a layout of a star here and some of the crisscrossing lines. And really all you'd have to do is just extend these lines down to that bottom triangle there. And you'd have something that looks very, very much like the um, the Kabbalah tree of life. Now, of course, these extend all the way up to these points. Some tool doesn't allow me to extend those. Uh, they don't have the correct orientation to extend those lines. I could extend it this way, but you can also extend it this way and this way. And that would be a kind of 12 vertice um, point. And I think that's something that the people who are into the Cathara grid talk about a 12 point tree of life compared to the 10 point version. Um, but I'll leave it up to you to kind of follow those trails. This is just another structural object that relates to a tree of life looking like thing uh, that has real geometry to it. So uh, I hope you appreciated that video and enjoyed the little journey I took you on in exploring the Reyush God Seed. Like I said, I really enjoy and love sharing the techniques to draw this stuff. There's something that happens when you start to get your hands either in building it or drawing it that makes all the information I'm sharing really applicable to deepening your understanding to this art and craft and the transformational elements that it contains. So please check out my Patreon uh, that has many lessons of drawings there, as well as uh, my apprenticeships, which are ongoing. 
And New Geometers Facebook group is a play, great way to stay engaged with other geometers that are also beginning to work with these techniques. And please subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed this video. I'll be having some more in the future. So thank you very much and have a great rest of your day. Much love and peace. Bye.